morning. Uh, let's invite uh, the management now of Titagad Rail. Uh, Crystal recently upgraded the long-term debt and the short-term debt credit rating for Titagad Rail. How will this development impact the company's cost of finance? How is business shaping up? Umesh Chaudhary, Vice Chairman and MD of the company is now with us on the show. Uh, Umesh, morning. This is Reema here. First, if you could tell us, does this impact your ability or what your cost of finance is? What is it currently? And then just lay out the debt picture for us. What is the current total debt, the need for working capital? Good morning, Reema. Always a pleasure being with you. Uh, so this is a, this is a uh, kind of a, apart from being a, uh, uh, in a, having an impact in our overall uh, cost of funding, uh, and I'll, I'll get into more details of that. It is also a validation of the strength of the company, and the company has been uh, uh, growing from strength to strength. So if you see over the last two, three years, uh, we have had several notches of credit upgrade, uh, which is reflective of how the company has been moving, the trajectory that the company has uh, been moving in. Uh, in terms of our debt, we are, uh, as of now, uh, we are uh, debt-free. Uh, we are net debt free company but we have substantial in our business we require substantial amounts of guarantees and lc so non fund based limits and definitely a stronger credit rating helps us in saving costs of the uh, uh, of the cost of lcs and bgs that we have to incur umesh hi good morning and thanks for that so debt free that's always great uh, music to the ears of investors Let's talk about growth, right? I mean, uh, this is a space that the government is focusing on in a huge way. So tell us, what is the kind of potential that you see over the next, say, one to two years? What is the updated order book? The last number I have is 28,000 crores. Have you been able to build on to that? And what are the kind of expected inflows for this year? Morning, Sonia. So, uh, yes, absolutely. We are in a sector which is, uh, if I may say so, having a dream run. Uh, the government has focused a lot on the infrastructure and I think the the uh, the Modi government has pretty much uh, uh, defined that uh, the route roadmap or the rail map, if I may say so, to the three trillion, third largest economy or the five trillion dollar economy is the railways, and uh, they are working truly towards that uh, that objective and on that route. So uh, we believe that the the uh, growth in the railway sector, whether it is on the cargo side or it is in the passenger is going to continue. In terms of the order book, uh, you know, we normally declare the order book on a quarter to quarter basis. But having said that, you know, we if you really look at our last year revenue, which was 3,800 crores, we have a very strong order book. So our focus is not so much on building order book, but it's on execution now. Okay. And uh, so just one follow up there, uh, you know, in your order book, I mean, of around 28 to 30,000 crores, 50% uh, of it comes from the passenger segment. Do you think that contribution could go up further, given the kind of focus that the government has uh, on this space? And if yes, Absolutely. what are we looking at in terms of a split over the next one to two years between passenger and freight? Absolutely. So, uh, you know, I would I would probably take a little longer term. I would say in the next three to four years time, uh, the capacity that we are creating, and, and I have uh, spoken about this in your channel as well, that we are creating a capacity which will give us almost 800 to 850 coaches a year. Now, if you look at the uh, overall uh, potential revenue out of that 800, 850 coaches a year, each coach is about 10 crores, so that's eight and eight, eight and a half thousand crore of potential revenue. Now, how much will that uh, get executed? It will depend upon the market forces, execution, and all of that. So, but if you really look at the uh, the split of our revenue, it used to be 90% plus in the rail freight side, and it has the potential to go to 60% plus on the passenger side. So from being less than 10%, we can actually, on the rail uh, passenger rail segment, it can go up to almost 50, 60%. Hmm. Now, got that. Uh, Umesh, hi, good morning. Uh, Prashant here. You know, we had spoken, uh, if you remember, right after the uh, sort of election results, right? Uh, and uh, after the uh, portfolio births, etc., were given out, and uh, you know, we were at that point we discussed the issue of uh, premium trains versus other trains, right? And you had said that uh, even within Vande Bharat, the government, because of issues like overcrowding, etc., which is now becoming a, a bit of a, a sort of larger pain point, uh, there will be various variants of Vande Bharat. I, I remember you had said. 
Now, there's an article, uh, news, uh, this is art in the Free Press Journal, which basically says, and this is, I think, two days old, they said that the railway, uh, in a recent meeting, the railway board has resolved to make manufacture an additional 2,500 general class coaches beyond the current annual production schedule. 2,500 uh, uh, sort of general class coaches beyond the current annual production schedule. Have you heard anything? Uh, can you uh, sort of uh, share anything on this with us? So, yeah, morning, Prashant. So, uh, my information is exactly the same as yours. I've also seen it in the media that they will uh, be producing 2,500 more general class coaches in order to curb the overcrowding. And uh, I still maintain that it is not either or, it is and. Uh, I think uh, the railways is gearing itself and rightly so to cater to all strata and sections of the society, whether it is the premium segment, whether it is the chair car segment, whether it is the overnight journey segment, like we, the Vande Bharat that we are making or we are designing and manufacturing is the overnight segment. So long distance one, because it's the sleeper Vande Bharat, which we believe, and I, I am quite convinced about it, will actually uh, would like to change, the, we would like to change the way people like us, you and I would like to travel. And if we can ditch the flight to take a train, that is the uh, that is the real market shift that li is likely to happen with these premium segments. On the other side, we've seen the kind of overcrowding in the general segments, which is causing safety concerns, and the, and rightly so, the railways have taken a short term measure to immediately produce 2,500 GS coaches, uh, which is a very standard three tier type of coach, uh, in order to curb the overcrowding. So I continue to believe that the entire uh, spectrum of the coaches, whether it is premium or the general will continue to uh, see a higher demand. Mm. You know, the article also says all these 2,500 coaches are slated to be ready within the current financial year. I mean, uh, the, is it possible? I mean, how will, how will it happen? Yeah, the railways uh, have three production units. There is uh, ICF uh, Chennai, RCF okay. Kapurthala and MCF Raibareli. So, uh, you know, the way I look at it is that if the capacity of these plants is moved towards making general coaches, then they would require to the private sector to come in and, and supply the premium trains. Uh, of course, this is not something that the railways have announced or no tenders have been floated, but this is how our uh, estimates uh, are uh, figuring out. And um, I, I believe that the premium train segment is more and more going to come to private sector uh, suppliers like ourselves and uh, some others like Alstom, etc. Because premium sector, premium trains require also premium uh, design, European technology and all of that, which is available with only the private sector players. Uh, you know, yeah. got that. Now, just one last uh, question from my side, uh, Umesh. There is no railway budget now. Uh, it was done away with, but it's an important part of the budget uh, document, which is uh, it's not very far away. Will we? Are you expecting anything new here, or just reiteration of the uh, goals, etc., which have been laid out earlier? See, I, I mentioned this that I think the roadmap was pretty much set out. So I don't right. see that there will be anything uh, transformational that is possible in the hundred days. What okay. we would love to see is a uh, is substantial allocation of budgetary resources to the railways, so that you know even so. On one side, I would say the the journey from here to let's say five years from now, which means more rolling stock, some de bottlenecking of infrastructure. But on the other side, we would like to also see the five to ten year horizon, which means more track. And that's what we've been reading in the news that railways will sanction additional amount of money to increase the track capacity. And we believe that what happened in the road sector over the last couple of decades or last decade will really happen in the rail sector over the next couple of decades. Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Umesh, we leave it at that. All the best. As you said, that this is uh, you know, a great time to be a part of the sector which is booming right now. It's seeing a dream run. Hopefully, that should continue. And the street always likes companies that have no additional debt. No, uh, I mean, Titagar is a you know, net debt-free company. So, uh, that's always a positive there.